Hey, what's up guys? It's all here, and today I wanted to make a tier list of the best chemistry classes. Now, of course, this video will be a bit biased over what chemistry classes I like, and I might be poking fun of and jabbing at some classes that you like, but this is all my opinion and my own take with my own take on the chemistry classes that I've taken. So if you guys have different uh, opinions on what chemistry classes that you guys like and have been great for you, be sure to leave your own kind of ordering of what chemistry classes are the best down in the comments down below. But with that, let's hop right into it and I am going to rank the best chem classes. Now, starting off, we have General Chemistry 1. And for me, General Chemistry 1 felt like a class that was a a prequel class. It, it was a lot of learning the basics and unit conversions and even reviewing some stuff that you learned before college when you took whatever base level chemistry class. And because of that, it's not a super intense chemistry class and you don't really learn a lot of cool stuff in it. It can be boring. A lot of people like it. I personally enjoyed it, but it wasn't the most stimulating class. So I'm going to put that in a solid B tier for chemistry classes. Um, after that we have General Chemistry 2. Um, I liked General Chemistry 2 a lot more than Gen Chem 1. General Chemistry 2, it felt like a way more cohesive class. I felt like you kind of were actually learning things in order and building up on things that you've learned previously with all the PKA and all. That being said, it got a bit repetitive and even then it still kind of lent itself to that unit conversions and doing the just basic algebra, algebra to figure out like what you had. And because of that, I don't think General Chemistry 2 will get as high of a rank as um, some of the other chem classes in this list. I will, I still think it's a B tier chem class. I think it goes into B tier, but I do think it is a head of general chemistry one. I think it's in a, a higher B tier than gen chem one. So I'm going to put it right at the start of B tier. It, it's a lot better of a class than general chemistry one, but it, it still doesn't have the spice and intensity of a lot of the higher level chem classes. Um, the next class that we have here is Organic Chemistry 1. I know Organic Chemistry is real killer for a lot of people. A lot of people think it's the bane of their pre-med or if they need it for bio. It's, it, it doesn't sit well with them. I personally, as a chemistry major, absolutely loved Organic Chemistry 1. I thought it was the first introduction into like what real chemistry was. I, I really felt like general chemistry, which it is to be fair, was the intro to the chem major and you weren't really learning a lot of the chemistry, you were just sort of learning the language of chemistry. And once you get into organic chemistry, you start learning some actual chemistry. You start learning how to actually make cool compounds and materials and you learn how to like look at a molecule and kind of gauge what sort of properties it will have, which is really, really cool. And because of that, I'm going to put OChem 1 in A tier, or you know what? Organic chemistry might go all the way into S tier. It might be an S tier class for me. That's that's up for debate. I might I might come back to that one. But for now, I'm going to put Organic Chemistry 1 into S tier, and then we have Organic Chemistry 2. I also really enjoyed Organic Chemistry 2. I thought it was a bit more of an intense class, and it was a bit more difficult than Organic Chemistry 1, but you know what? I might, I might bump down OChem 1 to uh, A tier and bring Organic Chemistry 2 up into S tier. Organic Chemistry 2, it's a lot more difficult than Organic Chemistry 1, and I think it gets past a lot of some of the memorization issues people have with Organic Chemistry 1. Organic Chemistry 2, you really start learning about 
more intense reactions. It's it's just a really good class overall, and some of the reactions you learn about it in it are really cool. And you start learning about like it, it's you get to the point where in your chem major, after you've taken OCHEM two, you start to feel like you can make a lot of different cool stuff. Maybe not more intense like chiral molecules that are used in medications, but organic chemistry two is really. Once you get to the sense that you're a chem major and can walk into like a hardware store and make really cool compounds out of whatever you find in the hardware store. And because of that, I really like organic chemistry too. And it's it's sort of the first inkling that you feel like you're starting to actually know chemistry, which I really love about it. Next, we get into biochemistry. Now, I know a lot of people will be up in arms where I'm going to rank biochemistry on this list because I, for one, cannot stand biochemistry. Biochemistry is probably my least favorite chemistry class in the chemistry major. Um, it just, there's not really, I don't know if there's a way around it, but it really felt like it lent into the memorization and not enough of the problem solving stuff that I liked in chemistry. And so because of that, I have to place biochemistry a bit lower. Now, of course, I think a lot of these classes and in general college classes and how much you like them and how much you're interested in a subject is super dependent on how it's taught and what professor you had. And I will say, biochemistry, I sort of didn't really have an interest in it before going into this class, but I also had an absolutely awful professor when I took the class could not stand how she taught or ran the class. And because of that, I do think my experience with biochemistry is soured even more than a lot of people. I just, biochemistry did not click with me and my interests in chemistry. And I know a lot of you love biochemistry and biochemistry is a favorite class for a lot of people. But for me, biochemistry, straight to the bottom, least favorite chem class I've ever taken. Um, and because of that, biochemistry goes right into D tier. Now, the next in line after biochemistry is inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry is a pretty difficult class, but I do think it's a lot of fun, and it finally sort of gets away from everything you've done so far since uh, organic chemistry, because everything you do, like, past in, in your whole organic chemistry year is all based in organic chemistry. And if you take biochemistry right after that or that same year, biochemistry leans really heavy into the organic chemistry, carbon-based chemistry stuff. And so inorganic chemistry is kind of the first taste of actual chemistry you get outside of organic chemistry. Because you do learn some inorganic chemistry when you're taking your general chemistry classes. But I do think general chemistry kind of leans into the foundational, like, fake chemistry. Of course, the stuff you learn in it is really important, but it's not always the most intense, and it doesn't always give you the biggest picture of it. And so because of that, I'm going to rank organic inorganic chemistry pretty high. I think it's an A-tier chemistry class. I think it's a lot of fun. You learn a lot of neat chemistry with like ligand complexes and all in it. And because of that, inorganic chemistry gets A tier. Next we have uh, your analytical chemistry class. Mine was called instrumental analysis. I, I enjoyed this class, but I also thought it was a bit boring and not really my main field of interest. I really enjoyed a lot of the cool techniques that we get to see because in almost all of our previous chemistry classes, we hear about all these cool techniques. We hear about NMR, uh, IR spectroscopy, all of this stuff, and mass spectrometry. And these are like how we know that the stuff we make looks like what it is and that we have our actual product. And this class really delves into like how all of that lab tech and machinery actually works and how you interpret the data that comes out of it and all the different tools you have to figure out what your molecule actually is. And I think all of that stuff was really neat. I thought learning about the instrumentation and how it works and is made and all is really cool. That being said, again, analytical chemistry isn't my 
biggest interest. And so I thought a lot of the stuff past that and like how you interpret the data was really boring. So I really liked learning about the lab machinery. Interpreting the data, it, it was real slow for me. That being said, I really liked my professor and I think I, that made or broke the class. I think if I had a bad professor in this class, I would have been absolutely miserable and probably put this in C or D tier. But because I had a good professor who emphasized what we were interested in and all and really explained stuff, it made the class not too difficult and a bit more interesting than it would have been otherwise. And because of that, I'm putting this right into B tier. Uh, it's a pretty... I'm sure if you were into analytical chemistry, it would be rated way higher. But for me, because I'm not super into analytical chemistry, it's a pretty average chemistry class for me. It, honestly pretty forgettable. Now next we move on to the two big boys, the PCHEM classes, and I have these here as my quantum mechanics uh, PCHEM class and the thermodynamics PCHEM class. It depends on what school you go to, which one is first semester and which one's second semester PCHEM, so I'm just going to be referring to them as such. And so let's talk about thermo PCHEM first. I think it is probably, and I think most people would agree, it's probably the less difficult of the PCHEMs and a lot more tangible. A lot of the stuff you learn in the quantum mechanics PCHEM is kind of the mind-blowing, like, uh, this doesn't really make sense based off everything we've learned about chemistry and known about the physical world so far. But because it's quantum mechanics, it does that and is allowed to do whatever it wants, even if nothing in it is intuitive. Um, because of that, I do think it's a bit easier from a conceptual standpoint, but it still has a lot of the gross math that is associated with PCHEM. And I'll be honest, I, despite how hard and how intensive a lot of the quantum mechanics stuff you learn is, I do think it's interesting, and learning about some of the crazy stuff you can do with quantum mechanics is really cool. So that does boost up quantum mechanics PCHEM, and I do think the fact that the uh, PCHEM, the, the thermo semester, like you learn about your gases and thermo and all, and that's cool, and it might be really cool for some people, but it's way less cool than quantum mechanics, and it still has some of that PCHEM difficulty. And because of that, I think I'm going to have to put it in, in B tier. It's it's kind of another A eh class. I think it's difficulty bumps it down a notch. And yeah, I, I think B tier is a pretty good ranking for it. Um, next we go into our quantum mechanics semester of PCAM. And this is probably one of the hardest classes I think you can take in a college. It is one of the hardest classes you can take in a chemistry major. Maybe if you're really good at math and you have a really good physics background along with a really good chemistry background, this class isn't so bad for you. But for a lot of people, this is the GPA destroyer nightmare class. That being said, despite of how difficult it was, I thought the stuff you learned in it was really really interesting and I really enjoyed learning about quantum mechanics and the physics behind a lot of the chemistry we do and the math and all of that and it's just really cool. Some of the quantum mechanical concepts you learn about are really really cool. I could make a whole series of videos about just neat topics in quantum mechanics and the, the breadth of it from like lasers to quantum tunneling and electronics it's just crazy and all of it is like the absolute fundamentals of how all the chemistry you've learned about in your whole chemistry major come together and is proven by some math. I, I'm i going to put this, I don't know if I should put this in high A tier or S tier because I don't know if how difficult it is bumps it down a level. I might, I might be putting it into the low S tier. Um, Maybe A tier, it really depends, it flip-flops. I think the difficulty of this class is the only thing that should bump it down a level, but the actual information and topics that you go about in it 
are absolutely S tier. It explains all the fundamental chemistry you've learned. It explains even more cool stuff. It really delves into some really interesting, crazy science from like tunneling and it's just a really cool class and some of the stuff you learn in that really feels like magic and like the cutting edge of science and because of that your quantum mechanics semester is it's really highly rated in my eyes i thought it was a really interesting class absolutely love it um as for some adjustments looking back now that i've ranked all of these i think i'm gonna bump our or, um, I don't know which one of these was general chemistry one or two. I'm going to bump um, general chemistry one. I'm going to say that was one. I'm going to bump general chemistry one down to C tier. Looking, looking at all these other classes, I really don't think it should be on the same level as some of these other chemistry classes. Um, biochem I'm going to keep in D tier. I do think gen chem one is a C tier class. It is it is a good class, you learn a lot, and it is really fundamental for the stuff you're going to learn later on in your chemistry major, and um, in general, it's a good class, but compared to other chemistry classes that you're going to take, it's really on the less interesting side. Um, I do think uh, instrumental analysis, uh, analytical chem, should be above PCHEM 2, um, and I think Gen Chem 2 should be above instrumental analysis. I thought Gen Chem 2 was a bit more interesting and uh, not more useful, but yeah, I don't know. Um, inorganic chemistry, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna move inorganic chemistry up ahead of organic chemistry one. I absolutely love organic chemistry one, but I think the stuff you learn in, in organic chemistry is a bit more fundamental to a full understanding of chemistry and a lot of the stuff you learn in that class is really, really cool. Um, Ochem 2, I'm going to keep that high S tier. If if the quantum mechanics semester of PCHEM was less hard, I think it would be above Ochem 2, but I do think it how difficult it is and how killer it is for everyone drops it down a bit. But yeah, I think that is my final list on what my tier ranking of the, the main core chemistry classes in the chemistry major are. I'm sure a lot of you have different opinions on this and experiences and interests. So whatever your uh, tier list is, I would love to hear because it's really interesting to see what sort of subjects people are into and what different aspects of chemistry people like because chemistry is the universal science. It's such a huge major. And so people have huge interest variance in it. Um, but with that, that's my chemistry major tier list, and I'll see you guys next time.